Well, I'm currently on the way to the airport uh, with the worst Uber driver ever. Um, seriously, this guy sucks. Yeah, who taught you to drive? I would like to introduce everybody to my dad. So, real quick, have you ever read the Wheel of Time books? A long time ago, just the first volume. That was it. Then I was okay. too busy raising you guys. So... Are you excited? Are you going to watch the show? Of course I'm going to watch the show. Absolutely. Are you only watching the show because of me? No. No, I would have watched it anyway. I like good science fiction. Well, it's it's fantasy. Same thing to me. Same fantasy, science fiction is good. How does it feel to be a YouTube star now? I'm just... <laughs> it's not my... I'm going to keep my day job. You heard it here. We made it to the airport. I am waiting to get on the plane. They had a little bit of a delay, so we're waiting on that right now because of weather. I have a, a very quick turnaround in New York, so let's hope nothing goes nuts with that because that would be a pain. But yeah, we're, we're in the airport. We're ready to go, headed out to London. Gotta say, this is pretty exciting, guys. Um, obviously, I've traveled before, but never traveled for something like this. So. I wanted to make sure I documented pretty much everything. So one really cool thing about getting here to the airport, I got here like three hours early because I was super worried. Right before the flight, Delta, when I was trying to check in, made it sound like I had to have a COVID test. Now I'm vaccinated and the UK rules and everything that we had said, said that you don't need to have a test before you come. We're gonna get tested while we're there, especially if you're vaccinated. I am, I have proof of it. So when I got here, I was flipping out because Delta was trying to tell me that I needed to have a test, which I didn't have and couldn't get. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, am I gonna have to miss this? And work turns out the person was wrong. So heart attack, um, unnecessary, but happened anyway. But I got here early just to, you know, international flights, you never know. And of course, everything was done within 20 minutes. So. I sat in a restaurant and edited the video that's gonna come out tomorrow so that you guys will see. I, I was thinking I'd have to do that on the plane. That's done, so awesome. But there you go. Um, here I'll be getting on the plane shortly. This is probably the last you'll see of me before I'm on the plane. I'll probably show you around. Um, Amazon is hooking us up. We're, we're flying first class, not only to New York, but across. So I'll give you a little tour of the first class uh, international flight stuff too. So we'll see you soon. So, my flight got delayed, like I said it would, and I ended up getting rerouted to Atlanta, but look who I ran into. Hello! It's Critter. It's me! We're going to be plane buddies now. Heck yeah! Really, we're going to be sleeping the whole way, but yes. maybe. So, one might say that we will have slept together by the end of this trip. Oh, bye. <laughs> oh, my. Cut that. Cut it out. Cut it out. Yes. So we got here to the hotel, got through London, I thought, you know what, let me show you the place real quick. We got a bathroom here, beautiful, and then here's the room. Now again, it's very dark in here right now, but that's because we have these massive curtains that I can't even figure out how to work. <laughs> ah, let there be light. And here's the view from the room. So that over there is Trafalgar Square. Is there everybody moving around? We'll go out and do some exploring in a bit. But 
First things first, it's nap time. So it is the morning of the premiere. We have a couple hours until we have to be anywhere. I figured what I would do is go do some sightseeing. You, I'll, I'll show you all around London uh, as much as I can walk around the area from London. Uh, and so let's go do that. This right here is Trafalgar Square. Pretty amazing. So these places are like everywhere. I think that is basically like the Starbucks of the UK. Uh, I've seen them on like every corner. You'll see them as we walk around a little bit. That is the hotel right here at Trafalgar Square. Pretty awesome, Amazon, pretty awesome. Andor? Double-decker buses are everywhere, everywhere. They're showing Jersey Boys here. down that way. One of the oddest things that I'm finding as I'm uh, walking around that's different uh, from the U.S. In the U.S. we walk on the right side. I guess it's just like driving and I didn't think about this. We walk on the right side, but everybody here, if I walk on the right side, I end up getting in their way. I'm wondering if that's a thing or if we just all run into each other. But. <laughs> See right now it's working fine, but every other time I'll walk. And if I'm on the right, I run into people. If I'm on the left, I don't. I'll have to get that question answered sometime. All right, we're definitely gonna go over here. We got people on horses. I think I came at the right time. They're about to change the horses out. This is like the equivalent of getting into the White House right here. Um, 
you've got all these guards, you have the gates, you've got all the people. I'm in sort of like the government district here. Um, you can see over there, there's the London Eye. It's the giant uh, Ferris wheel, which I'm sure we'll get to here in a minute as I walk around. I'm gonna keep going. Now I'm gonna assume this has to do, yesterday here was Remembrance Day, which is a big holiday in the UK. It's essentially the equivalent, my understanding, of like Veterans Day in the US. Um, so there were a lot of events yesterday, and I think these are reads laid for war veterans. Now these are all over London still. You can even see this one has like a glass of beer in it. But uh, I haven't seen one person using them. They look cool, they're iconic. But I think, uh, I think everybody has a cell phone now. Okay, so that is Westminster Abbey right there. And you got the, the statue. I'll zoom in if we can get it in between the trucks here. That's a statue of Churchill right there. The Abbey behind him. And this is Parliament. And Big Ben under construction. I'm not going to go in or anything, but I thought I would show this. This is Westminster Station. Pretty cool. Huh. There's a pier over here. We'll go out that way. <laughs> Uber boat. How about that? Again, you can see there's the clock inside. That's Big Ben. Completely being refaced, I believe. Well, I was gonna try to get into Westminster Abbey, which is right there behind the bus. But uh, I think you have to have a ticket. And then of course right here you have Parliament, which I also can't get into without a ticket. And I don't have time, so... I guess I can't go in there. Uh, probably gonna walk back towards the hotel now. Um, see some more stuff on the way back. Okay, see what I'm saying? See people walking on the left? One of these days I will actually figure out what side of the street here I'm supposed to be walking on or on the sidewalk. Maybe I'll ask somebody. Well, this seems like a tourist trap. So maybe I should go in and buy something. back in Trafalgar Square. I think I'm going to stop back at the hotel, drop this off, and maybe see if I can go over to the museum before we have to leave for the premiere. Back to the hotel. Here on the wet carpet, kind of really the blue carpet, I'll show you in a second. Um, this is pretty nuts. We're getting all set up. I want to show you kind of what's going on. Uh, first, you're looking here, that's all the media. At the very far in there, you've got a bunch of Instagram influencers. Look at these guys right here. Say hi, Daniel. Hi. Stress. <laughs> Hello, everyone. 
we got more TikTokers, Instagram people, famous ones, and then the cast isn't even here yet. So this is going to be nuts. Stay tuned. We are packed in like sardines here, but we have just been told that Daniel Henney as Lan is arriving, you know, we're going to be overlapping a lot because we're standing on top of each other. We're just going to have to like step in, step out because they're not. Yeah, pretty much. I am here currently on the screen with the innkeeper and, and the the editor reborn. Hello. Are you What's guys up, excited? Oh, yeah. Just just like, dandy. Like we are packed in like sardines here. I know, we look so short. Not that we are, <laughs> but. Everybody always likes these comparisons. <laughs> I, I wasn't lying when I said I was tall, but um, <laughs> these may be the only interviews I get with how packed in we are. So, are you getting space up there? I mean, I'm so big. I don't know how to do this. I'm trying to like, you know, pinch it over. Are you guys live yet? Not no. yet. No. Okay. But anyways, this is awesome. This is awesome. So, what is your? Are you nervous? Uh, no. No? Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling it. The nerves. Now, earlier today, you guys ran into Marcus Rutherford. So you guys are like old friends when he comes by. Yeah, you know. Uh, Taylor, did you successfully <laughs> give him your name? I successfully gave him my full name. That's right. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Hopefully this audio comes out okay, considering what? the speaker blasting <laughs> the uh, show music is right behind us, too. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. So... The show music's nice. So at least when people are listening to us, they're hearing Lorne. L Lorne is Lorne the, Wolf right here. Yeah, yeah. Hell of a job, Lorne. Yeah. Hell of a job. Okay, well, we'll see you soon. Yeah, Nate, we'll see you soon. That's what I like to do. Yosha has arrived. Yosha and Daniel Henney right there. On their way over. Okay, so they're on their way over here. Yosha's directly behind me. We are all going to interview them at the same time, basically. It's a shot of the largest bodyguard ever. Taller than me. I would not mess with that dude. In front of 3,000 people. You got to filming again soon, right? Yeah, we're shooting actually this week. So, so you're going to be very jet lagged. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a flight tomorrow morning at like 6 a.m. So we have to get back to Croat to the, well, not the two rivers, but. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go right, you guys go oh, right sure. ahead. Uh, Yosha, I know you're very far on the bus, right? Right. Do you have a favorite so far? I think uh, my favorite one is uh, book three. Excellent choices. I love that. Okay. What Aja would you be? Ooh, that was gonna be my question. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> well, it must be it must be blue, I guess. Mm, good answer. Uh, yeah. Now, was that the Rand answer or the Yosha answer? Uh, a bit of both. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so so I, I'm Nablus. Uh, my question for you is this: What about this role? Like, you saw this, you you read for it. Like, what made you want to take this role on, knowing that you might be this character for a long time? Um, I mean, it's Rand. You yeah. Know, I guess you all are aware of his arc. Yeah. And um, you, I guess you all are aware of how far Rand goes. And as an actor, that's something I want to yeah. do as well. So I'm very excited here. That's awesome. This character is a character that goes through, I don't want to give any spoilers, but like severe amounts of emotional growth, trauma, and development. As an actor, is that something that you kind of took as a challenge? Or like, how do you approach the growth of Randolph Orko in the series? step by step, you know, with, I'm, not, I'm aware of what happens in the books and I'm aware of its potential and its arc, but for season one, it's just, you know, it starts yeah. in the two rivers and I have to make sure that I'm not getting ahead of things. Did you, was it hard to capture the country bumpkin vibe? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, um, other than Randolph Thor, what, who's your favorite character? In the books? In the books. Um, I really enjoy Pan and Fane and uh, Louis Arm. Of course. That was Yosha Stradowski as Randall Thor. Hopefully you guys got all of that. We're, we're kind of popcorning around on this as we go, but this has been awesome. We're going to talk to Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hi. Can we um, touch mics again? It's my favorite thing. I don't know what that sounds like for you, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> we touched the tips, at least. Uh, we're going to get to monitor. <laughs> 
But this is Critter. You should check out Critter. Critter was on the live show like what, like two weeks ago? Like a week ago. It we was had a ball. Like recent. a week ago. Yeah, not even that. Um, what can they find? Her? She's on TikTok. She's live on TikTok right now. So hopefully you will have already seen her live on TikTok because this is going to come out later. But you should be right there. <laughs> um, how did you get started on TikTok? Um, well, like everybody else, I downloaded it at the beginning of the pandemic because I was poor <laughs> and started posting about my pets. And then one day I stitched Dragon Mount about how to pronounce Nynaeve. And my, my post just kind of blew up. And then from then on, I was like, oh, TikTok likes it when I post about the Wheel of Time? Say less. And so I've been doing it ever since. Well, it's, it's funny as hell, first of all. And it's really good. Like, you're really good. Yeah. We've gotten to hang out, like, the last couple days and yeah. it's been a lot of fun it has. Uh, we went out to a pub last night really fun so uh, the crown and anchor was the, the crown pub. and anchor pub yes. we met malkir talks yes elliot edits and uh wheel of time theories uh Ro or richard sorry yes um not to mention this guy <laughs> come on in come on over here this is the line this, this is jason from dragon mount was also there at the pub Yes. I'm not even um, sure which camera to be looking at, but both of them. We're we're talking both to both. Live there and recording there. Daniel, hop on in, and then we, and then Daniel's here too. This I is a cute photo, actually. Sometimes. I mean, yeah. Um, oh, we're doing a photo. No, we're just all on each other's live streams right now. Okay, Hamad has arrived, so Loyal is here. Uh, let me get a good shot. First of all, that man has the greatest beard I've ever seen in my life. Isn't that beautiful? Seriously, greatest beard I've ever seen in my life. But here is Hamad. That's your loyal right there. Glory to the builders. All right, I think Hamad is about to come over. We're going to get a chance to ask him some questions. This is our first talk with loyal. So glad to have you here. Congratulations for being on the show. My name is Jason. I'm Dragon Mount. How are you doing, Jason? You all right? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. I'm here in this beautiful night seeing a show that you were a big part of. Tell us what it was like. How long did it take you to get into costume and everything for playing Loyal the Ogier? Uh, uh, in the beginning, it was, uh, I think it was like five hours. We put it down, we put it down to like three and a half, four. Oh my god, so you you streamlined the process from a five hour makeup and costume and prosthetic were there prosthetics involved and everything yeah, else? Yeah, 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 full prosthetics, yeah. That, yeah, so like full face. Uh, I don't want to say too much. Yeah, of course. <laughs> don't say too much. Don't worry, like, no one's full watching. Face. <laughs> full face uh, and you know to make me, and then a big suit to make me look bigger and a lot of stuff that I won't say. All right, well, that's great. I appreciate it. So, with Loyal is a character who loves to read the books, yeah. uh, read all books, and he's a scholar of history and everything else. So, my question for you is, how far into the Wheel of Time books are you? I'm on the Great Hunt. You're all right. You're I'm on the, the Great, great Hunt. Hunt. You're yeah, going yeah. along. That's yeah, a great yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Thanks, sir. Man. Really it. looking forward to seeing you on screen. Thank, thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. So, I'm Nablus. Yeah, it's good to, good to meet you. Yeah, so, yeah, man. I think I can officially say I am big enough to be an Ogier yes. because we're about the same size. Yep, yep. Right? Pretty much, yep. So, Jason just asked you all about how all the time it took to get into role. Yeah. Physically. Uh -huh. Here's what I want to know. What... Loyal is such a fan favorite character. Everybody loves him. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, like, what do you do to get ready for a role like that? Like, kind of walk through the process of like, you get the script, you, you're there. How do you get ready to play a character like that? I mean, it was it was um, this one was particularly special because I've never done anything like this before. This is the, this is the biggest thing I've ever done. So, um, and, and I know how uh, devoted the community yeah. is to the to the to the series to the books. And I wanted to do I want to do that justice. So whenever I come, whenever a role has come to has come to me, I always I take it really seriously. So I try as I mean I, I have a process. I you know spiritually I try to get into the um, I guess the the mind and the spirit of of whoever, whoever whatever I'm playing. But I think I, I kind of I do the best I can basically. Yeah. Um, but I always have the same process whenever I go in, which is I just I'm just quite chill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I try not to take it too seriously. And I know how important. This is, but I, I, I take it extremely seriously when it comes to the work. But I think for me, I need to make sure that I am as zen as possible. So when I'm going into that process of getting into the character and 
you know, delivering the lines and doing that. I know I'm doing it justice. That's so awesome. I mean, I, 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 fans love to hear that. I mean, that one of the things that's impressed me in all the interviews we've seen from all of you is how well you guys understand the characters. Um, how did you get the role? Like, because uh, I up to this point, I know you've done a lot of theater work. Yes. How did you get this particular role? Like, what was that process like? I did the tape like everyone else. Yeah. I did the tape like everyone else, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and that, that's it. That's it. Well, I did the tape. Thanks a lot, man. It was good meeting you. Thanks, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You must know this. Yeah. What's it like to play somebody that everybody loves? Yeah, I'm not nervous at all. Nice. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, a bit nervous. Um, uh, I try not to think about it too much because if I do, then I'm sweating all the time. Yeah. Um, I just do whatever. I do what I always do. Um, I was talking to neighbors here. I was just saying like. You know, I, I come with every, I come to every role with a, a level of zen. I try not to take it too seriously, but when I'm doing the work, I take it extremely seriously because I want to deliver the best I can possibly do. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I just complete zen, and I just leave, I keep all the other stuff out the window because I can't let that enter. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't want to be too hasty. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you are absolutely brilliant in Midsummer's Night Dream. There's a very overt comedy to that play. Yeah. Loyal has more of a subtle comedy to his character that kind of comes through inadvertently. What was it like trying to tackle that kind of humor throughout the show? Um, again, I think it was it's the writing. The writing on in, in the show is incredible. So I didn't have to work too hard. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, it was quite. It was quite easy. It was quite easy to. to <laughs> it's okay, flex, man. Yeah, no, no, I mean it was quite easy to 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 kind of delve into that sort of subtle comedy and and, and the, in the, the slight because he takes everything so literal. And I think that's what I love about him. He's so in, there's there's, a, there's an innocence to him. You know, I don't think it's I don't think it's gullible. I think it's just pure innocence. And he just he just wants to he just wants everyone to be happy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And his, his loyalty to the people that he travels with in, on this adventure is what keeps him, you know. So is that, he's like a huge child. I, I kind of see him like, as a huge child. He just wants, yeah. to, he just wants everyone to be happy. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that's where that sort of comedy comes in. Okay. So that's, that's what I feel anyway. Thank you so much. Really yeah, appreciate thank you. Appreciate it, man. We have also behind us right now a Sarah Nakamura sighting. Sarah is right here. I think Sarah Nakamura may be coming over to say hi to us. I, I had asked her to come out and talk to us, so she is here, and I think we may be getting an interview here with Sarah Nakamura. How, Sarah, how surreal is this whole thing for you to be here? Um, it's really okay, overwhelming and wild, um, to be perfectly honest. I've been feeling all of the emotions today, so uh, I'm so excited to be here and um, seeing my, my, this is AK, <laughs> and seeing her for the first time in a few years, it's been so wild, and so I'm, I'm just thrilled to be here, and I'm, I'm glad that I literally snuck past security so that I could come see you guys. <laughs> yeah. So glad you came by. Yeah, no, it was, it was one of those really hilarious things that I was like, and I see my friends, and they won't let me. Uh, they won't let me say hi. So I just booked it. Yeah, I booked it. And so now I'm gonna go make sure that I'm not getting kicked out, and I'll leave you guys to see all these amazing people that are coming in. And all I have left to say is enjoy the show tonight. It's gonna be great. Thank you, Thank you for right. your contributions to it. Thank you for helping to make it so amazing. Thank you, Sarah. You look amazing, by the way. The boots are great. Thank boots you. Great. Thanks. Yes, that was the choice. Thank you. Was that the Herod's outfit? Uh, no, just the boots. Just the boots. Just the boots, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that, that was Sarah Nakamura. Now, sorry for the bad shots. We are literally squeezed in like sardines. Let me tilt and see. You can see everybody here. We are all, like, squeezed in here. So... But this is exciting. Okay, Zoe is coming right now, and Zoe looks incredible. See, she is not an smart casual, which I think was the way to go. <laughs> I think she she looks pretty badass. I can't not gonna lie. I can't wait to talk to Zoe. That is Zoe Robbins as Nynaeve and Rafe Judkins right here. And we'll see we'll see them very very soon. We're gonna see them all here in a moment. We know this guy. This is Rafe Judkins, the man himself, who oh, is the showrunner. Can I shake your hand? I, think, oh, I don't know oh, if we're allowed to touch anyone. Like so, so sorry. <laughs> Rafe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for all the 
congratulations on the number of How are you feeling right now? I mean, I feel in total shock. It's still very surreal that this is happening in the moment, but it's it's feeling more and more real every minute as it happens. As there's actually a red, well, blue carpet and real time everywhere. And it's all actually happening. So is it still is it like incredibly surreal for you to be working with people like Rosamund Pike and Daniel Henney here? I mean, it's crazy just to think that, you know, we were trying to build this show and make it happen for so many years now and to, like, put all these pieces into place and then see them in one place like this. It is, um, it's quite overwhelming. <laughs> well, you have done a remarkable job, both of interacting with us, everything we've seen, the content looks amazing, and we can't wait to see the show tonight. So thanks for being here, thanks for spending some time. Yeah, of course. It's okay. I'm so glad that you guys are here and that this is happening. This is, like, a big part of why the show works and why the books work, too. So it's awesome. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Rafe. So. Oh, my gosh. Well, Rafe, I, I'm Nablus. Hello. really, really good to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. So we're, we're, like, almost the same age, and we both picked up the books around the same time in our lives so that's what's really cool I would love to ask you like when you first picked up the books like did you have any inkling that you would be the one to make this happen that many years later no I mean I didn't even know I wanted to be a television writer at the time I was yeah. like you know studying away at, at uh and biological anthropology. <laughs> so, so you know, I think in some ways it's really nice because I got to read the books as a fan first and foremost, and then and then come back around to them as an adaptation later down the line. So I think in some ways that was such a gift because, like, you know, there's everything that I read now I read with like a TV writer's mind as I look at it. So it's really it's a gift actually. I think I read them before. So what emotions are going through your head right now? Like you're finally at the finish line of at least the first season, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it feels, it's a feeling of elation and sort of shock right now, just seeing it finally all happening and people being able to watch the show. Like it has felt like our little secret for such a long time. It's it's so, it's so thrilling to let other people finally see it because that's kind of who we've been making it for all this time. Well, I feel like I can speak from at least a lot of the fan base that I interact with in saying this. We're super thankful that you pushed to make this happen. We're super thankful that you're at the helm of this because it's, I think, the biggest fear for anybody with adapting their favorite story yeah. is that somebody that doesn't get the story is in charge of it, right? Yeah. And I, I, I think we're super grateful about that. So I just wanted to say thank you. and Thank you so much. And it's like, you know, it feels like I really, I really love the books and have come at it from that perspective. So I think, you know, probably the most important people to me tonight are the people who love them too and are, are getting to see it. So like, I hope that you guys like it. Well, thank you again. Right next to me right now is Rosamund Pike. Uta, uh, first of all, I'll say this. I'm a super big fan of your work. I, I really have been. I, what I, what was the process for you getting involved with the Wheel of Time? And I guess what were some of the things that you wanted to bring to this series in particular? Because I know you directed the first two episodes, correct? I actually have to say I got very lucky because I didn't even know the book series. You know, like it was foreign to me. It was completely new. I had to you know read up about it, and then I made Rave. And I was thinking like, okay, what shot do I have not knowing the book series? You know, to get this incredible job to build the world with him but I think he just decided you know like on a gut feeling and personality we just clicked in our first meeting and he hired me for the job and I always consider myself being the outside voice that doesn't come from a fan side so I look at the scripts maybe with a more neutral point of view you know instead of having all the knowledge from the books but you couldn't help but become a fan while you were involved in this incredible world and building it and the challenges of course was you know building the world because it's massive but given the right support by Amazon I was just a kid in a really big candy store I had so many tools and incredible talented people you know like supporting me well, so you mentioned challenges. I guess uh, this might be some to expand upon. What do you think the biggest challenge in at least the, the the episodes that you were a part of? What was the biggest challenge from adapting that and from, from at least a directorial standpoint? You know, like logistically, I would say the big uh, Trolloc battle at the end of the pilot, you know, because uh, we did so many things in camera. 
it was never, you know, like, oh, pan the camera over to the right side and, you know, in post we will put in 100 trollocs. We had these stunt people in those costumes designed by Nick Dutman and his team in, you know, like, on set battling for us. And, uh, you know, working with those logistics, you know, people who need bathroom breaks, who need to eat or whatever, you know, like you really have to kind of have an idea and a plan on how you're shooting things because you have to have in mind how long will they last, how much can you ask of them, tying things together, together with the choreographer, choreography that Roseman had to do with Daniel, you know, her water fighting behind her. Logistically, that was the most challenging one. Now, uh, channeling. Did you have any role in kind of how channeling would be visualized in terms of how it would be used in that battle? Like, was that a challenge? Because obviously you're not, you can't see that while you're filming it. Yeah. There's a, you know, like, very, you know, when it comes to channeling, there was a lot of talk about how the channeling sh should look. Uh, and Rosemont, you know, really had a very, very strong say in how the channeling should look. And she worked with a movement coach, you know. We gave, we had conversations with the movement coach, what we thought, you know, how channeling should look. And then Rosemont very much worked very closely with the movement coach t to get us there. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for being a part of it. And appreciate it. So, Daniel, how does it feel to have talked to the head of Amazon Studios? Uh, I'm just, I'm, sh my whole body's vibrating, <laughs> and that's pretty much all that I feel. Uh oh, uh oh, here we go. I don't know if we get Marcus Rutherford, Marcus, Jason Denzel from DragonMount.com. Oh, how are you, sir? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? I am. It's very surreal, and after uh, many years of reading the books, you know, it's been almost 30 years that I've been reading them, and 20 years, over 20 years of, of running Dragon Mount. But I want to hear from you. You are playing one of the most iconic characters in fantasy literature, um, and I know that you know not too much pressure there. But what's it like to be, you know, becoming Paranoid Byron? Oh, it's been amazing, man. I think. Um, yeah, as soon as, as soon as we started, we realized, you know, that people have been in love with these characters before I was born, like you said, like, and it's it's amazing to have that community there, because you realize as an actor, you want to be in something that people care about, that people are going to watch, and, um, and yeah, and I fell in love with the character. As soon as I picked up by the world, his inner thoughts, his inner monologue, his introspective qualities, his, you know, his journey with violence, I think as a bigger character is quite interesting, and I think it's, there's, there's a real refreshing quality to him. Um, yeah. So one of the, the, the defining traits about uh, Perrin, of course, is his connection with the wolves. Yes. And I know we're going to see some of that you know, in these episodes. Yeah. So um, I might have heard a rumor somewhere that you like walk around town with pet wolves or something like that. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell us a little bit Well, like, usually it? in the studios where we film, I'm usually just in like the car park at the back with like these Czech wolf dogs just hanging out. And it's honestly, man, it's so like cathartic and so like relaxing. And I'm so glad. The visual effects in this is amazing. But I'm, for that, you know, that connection that Perrin has, I feel like they have to bring real animals into it. I think there's an authenticity there of a real animal that you can connect, connect with and have a bond with. And this, you know, the wolf that I particularly have a bond with, we had to hang out for a bit and really, you know, create a connection. And it's been, it's been amazing. What's that wolf's name? Are you able to like, give, give your wolf pal a shout out here? Oh, Halapinka. It's a Czech, Halapinka. Czech wolf. Yeah, Halapinka. Yeah, no. She's Not a... Hopper. No, Hopper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stage it. Yeah, real name. Real name, Halapinka. Yeah. But yeah, no, she plays Hopper. Yeah. All right. Well, we know you're really busy here. So, no but, but thank you so much. Well, and, you know, congratulations no, on this. Thank you. Both both you, 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 you guys, you guys are, you know, the reason I'm here. So I, I well, appreciate, appreciate. Marcus, I guess let me ask you this. I, I'm Nablus. I do YouTube too. Uh, <laughs> Parent is such a loved character. What was awesome about this, Rafe said early on that he saw your audition tape and knew you were Parent. And I think that's amazing. I th first interview I saw, I thought the same thing of you. My question for you, like, how do you get into this role? Like, how do you get into playing Parent? Like, what goes into the process of becoming Parent? Um, I think you have to realize that, you know, he's being a, a lead character who doesn't actually say as much as everyone else. He's always like in his head and he's very considered with everything he does. So I think there's a real weight to something, with the, you know, there's a real purpose. So if he says something, if he gets angry, even if he smiles, you have to, you have to, have to be a purpose behind it. Because he's, you know, he's not like Matt or something like that, or Rand who's very headstrong. He's very considered with everything he does. And, um, you know, with the, you can just have one line in the scene, but it's so beautiful and so poised and considered what he's doing. 
as an actor, you really have to find out, you know, with your body language and your looks and your smiles and realize there's a whole language there for him in his head that he can bring to the screen. So let me ask you this too, because you guys had an interruption in the filming for the first season. What was that like as an actor, mm. stopping filming, coming back to it? Like, do you feel like that made the second round better? Like, did you fully understand the character better or yeah. what, or what were the challenges involved even with that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you always want a bit of momentum when you're filming. So I think it kind of like stops that. But then I think we all became so close as a cast, really. You know, when yeah. something like that happens, like a pandemic, you kind of, it's your loved ones and everything that takes precedent. And then, you know, when you come out of it, you realize that everyone really needs to escape. Even when we get back to our daily lives, people need to escape. And we have, we're really galvanized to tell this story because once people, you know, they get back to their working lives, they're, they're going to want to watch something like this and go to a completely different world. And um, we had, a, yeah, we had a real energy, real motivation to get it made for, for the fans. Well, thanks, Marcus. I know they need you elsewhere. So really thank you. It was really good meeting you, man. No Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was nuts. <laughs> And by the way, talking to him, he really is Perrin. He's so Perrin. Like, very, even the way he answers the questions. He's very, like, considering, gentle. You can feel gentle. the brain is just, like, working and stable and amazing. Okay. And, okay, I am a big guy. I'm going to say this. Anybody who thinks that that man is not big enough to play Perrin uh, is an idiot. My God. That is a big dude. He's gigantic and beautiful. Yeah. 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 Big dude. Oh my gosh. Oh my. Hello. I know you. Hi. I'm Kathy. I'm a dragon mouse. And, and I'm Nabless. Well, so I, Zoe, first of all, you look amazing. So I've said this before on stream. Nynaeve is my favorite character. I'm the biggest stan ever for Nynaeve. Yes. So, up, up. We're going to get her back. We're going to get her back. She'll be back. Stay tuned. Sorry, guys. I'll be Stay back. tuned. Hey, Maddie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So we have. Oh my gosh. So we have here Madeline Madden. How's it going? Oh. It's so wonderful to meet you. I know. I like one. Oh my gosh. So I'm Kathy from Dragon Mount. Um, and Nablus was talking about how Nynaeve is his favorite character, but a queen. You got You got to throw her. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just have to like <laughs> let me one up and say Egwene is mine and I am absolutely your look is perfection and I cannot wait to see how you've embodied her character and just I would love to know what piece of like is there a piece of the costume or the hair or the makeup that you put on that's immediately this is Egwene. You know what I when I first put my like wig on um, and uh, had the braid. It felt so special. I really was like, oh, this is a part of me, you know, it's, it's like a third arm or something. <laughs> Much more nicer than a third arm. Um, but it was that was really special. I think that has so much symbolism and carries so much weight for the women and for everyone, really. Even the men understand the importance of that braid. Um, so that was really special. I think the coat as well. You know, it's amazing how a costume can inform the way you move, um, which is such a big part of, you know, the character. Absolutely. Yes. One last, no. Go ahead. One more Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So 12 years ago, I named my daughter Avienda. Um, <gasps> really? Yes. yes. Oh, amazing. And I would love to know what name from the series do you think is going to be extremely popular? I feel like Nynaeve. I yeah. feel like Nynaeve is really beautiful. Especially now that people will know how to pronounce it. Yeah, yeah. or unless anyone wants to call their kid Egwene. It can be Egg for sure, which I think is pretty cute. <laughs> I get eggie. called Egg. Little Eggy, yeah. exactly. Egg. I, that's why I sign off in our group chat. I'll like sign off with a little egg emoji. So, um, yeah. yeah. <sighs> she threw me under the bus. I love Egwene too. I okay. just said, okay, I love Egwene. <laughs> I, I, you know, and that, that actually is a great lead into what I want to ask you. I, Egwene is such a powerful female character, right? I, I, and I think she's been such a role model in the series for so many fans for so many years. Like, does that add a lot of pressure, like, to you? Absolutely. Like, you know, these are characters that people have held so close to their hearts for so long. Um, and of course, you want to you want to bring justice to the character and embody them the best that you can. Um, you know, I feel like what has made the Wheel of Time so timeless is that people can connect to these characters, so I can relate to Egwene and understand her and be like, okay, how would a young woman feel in this situation? And 
Yeah, true. it's um, I've grown so much with her, and when I play her, it's like a second skin. Well, and I guess the last thing, because I know you've got to run, uh, is it is it exciting that this is finally here? And I guess what does this mean for you, knowing that this could be a character that you play for ten years? I hope I hope it is. I hope it is. I don't want to let her go. You know, even when I go home to have a break for Christmas or something, I miss playing her. So I hope it is. And I and I totally understand. Once you see this one <laughs> as naive, oh. I love the energy that you two together bring. Yes. She's so special. She's she's like my sister. We spend so much time together. I like we've that. even quarantined together. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Gosh, she is awesome. Awesome. We got, we got, we have Zoe back. Zoe, we where we left off was me telling you how you're my favorite. You're my favorite. And thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, I'm Jason from Dragon Mountain. So it's a real pleasure to be talking to you. Nice and to meet you. you. Yeah, so it has well, been my life. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say this. So Nynaeve's been my favorite character forever. And one of the things that stood out to me in all the interviews that you all have given has been how well you all seem to get these characters. Like, my biggest fear with the adaptation was going to be that... Um, the, 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 it doesn't translate as well to the screen, but like, you have nailed every conversation about Nynaeve. And so I guess my question is this, what has been the process of like learning the characters? Because when I know when you're stepping into something like this, it's gotta be nerve wracking. Uh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, what was the process? I mean, my very first conversation I had with Rafe was right before I was cast, and we sat down for an hour. I mean, I was in New Zealand, he was I think in Prague at the time and we Skyped for an hour and we just spoke about who she is and, and the whole world of Wheel of Time. So we've had like resources available to us from the get-go. There's obviously Rafe lives and breathes this world. It's, it means a lot to him. So I feel like the integrity of Wheel of Time has, has stayed intact and that's, you know, obviously what you guys hope for, what we hope for as actors and um, yeah, I mean we've just been, I mean we've got 14 books, to, you know, as a resource as well and all of you guys so it's like, we can't really go wrong. <laughs> so there's Nynaeve is a character who has a, a hidden power deep within her and it's something that when it does finally come out in the books when it, you know when she's angry is something that triggers it and maybe that's in the show we'll find out soon enough but my question for you is how do you what what sort of what do you dig into for yourself and your own heart to bring out that power that both in her personality and to manifest <laughs> That's a really great question. To be honest, I just, I, I think my process is, is really trying to get into her head and, and believe the circumstances that are actually happening. That's kind of the easiest way in for me. So I, I feel her anger and I feel her sadness and I feel her grief and I feel everything. I think that's that's the best way to tap into a character when you believe, you know, and you're in their mind and you, you think their thoughts and, yeah. That's fantastic. And I think that, quite frankly, I think that you and this character are going to take the world by storm. I am so excited. I'm so happy for you. We're proud of you for being in this role. You're doing a fantastic job. We can't wait to see you more in future seasons and everything else. So thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. You're the you're the best fandom ever. Thank you. Your support and your passion and yeah. We hope we hope we've done you proud. Seriously. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. My life is my life is complete. Sweetie workout sessions. We were uh, we were the only two cast that hadn't really met. Oh wow. Which really? is interesting considering sort of how the characters end up, but it's been really organic and it's been really special. And uh, yeah, whenever I have scenes with Zoe, I'm really, really excited because it's just, it's a super, there's an ease to it, there's a, there's a, a natural sort of feel to it. So yeah. I'm really excited about it. Does the character of Nynaeve intimidate you? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she intimidates me. All the women intimidate me on this, on this show, they're amazing. But uh, she is, uh, yeah, very formidable and really incredibly talented. Well, thank you so much for being willing to talk to us. It means the world to us. And, and big, say hello to the goblins. They are all here. Hey, goblins. <laughs> Goblin gang. Hey, goblins. Awesome. Well, we were told one more question. Thank you so much. It was so nice. Yeah. So nice. Yeah, we, we may not get land. We may not get land because of uh, cut for time. But uh, we'll get to see him in the premiere. 
we would have gotten to talk to Lan, but Daniel Green decided to hog all of the time. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm totally joking. Oh, okay. We were talking to Zoe. Okay. <laughs> Screaming. Ah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We've made it here, okay, in one piece, but look, it's, it's just one of those jobs. This is the world, and this is what the characters go through, and um, it's amazing to... to to do that not only emotionally go to those places with it but physically it's so important too and like with the cliff I was like I can't have somebody else do that because this is a huge moment for Egwene and I've got to do it Okay. So you may know this, probably not. I'm Egwene Elvira on Twitter. Um, she stole that from you. She's, I love it. <laughs> she's my favorite character. Yay. So what is it like to play the best character in the Wheel of Time? I mean, <laughs> the best character probably in the world, I think, I, ever yeah. written. <laughs> Honestly. Um, no, it's it's a dream come true. You know, I just knew, I was like, whether I get this role or not, I'll be so sad if I do not get this role. I'll quit acting. I'll, I'll quit. Um, but I, I, words cannot explain, and I'm just so thankful that Rafe and Kelly Hendry, who was our brilliant casting director, believed in me that I could do this and you know bring this just bring this character to bring justice to this character. It's <laughs> cold and it's late. I no, 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 <laughs> no, you guys are fine. No. <laughs> Well, I just also want to say your work outside of acting, your activism is so inspiring. Thank you, Thank you so much Thank for all that work. And I just want to say you're playing the ultimate underdog, the character who, in my opinion, just goes through challenge after challenge, not to get into spoilers, but it's just so impressive. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what you're going to bring to the character Thank season after season. Thank Amazon. you, guys. All right. Yeah, hey, Amazon. Just crowbar that in there. <laughs> oh, well, we've been tapped several times to let you go. This was incredible. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and I think that might be it. We are ready to sign off. We'll be into the premiere right now, and you will see a spoiler-free review from me later. Signing off. So right now we are at a styling event here where uh, they're putting us in, like, hairstyles, which I don't have. And they didn't have a wig, or else you'd see me in a wig. But, uh costumes and things from the show. Now I have to show off here before he runs away. Jason Denzel. Tell me what he is. Like are you a noble? Are you I'm um I'm the richest wannabe noble in the, the two rivers. Make so, I, I with see my, it. With my, uh, Ooh he's got a crown. I've got a crown and a cape and um, and I, I beard I, I braid my beard um, to show the lineage of my house, which is why it's real short. <laughs> so, well, and we've got Critter over here, and I said I with the cell phone. Uh, it's my communication tear on real. I heard cool kids sit in the back. So, the Tower of London. We're about to go there. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Hatch. Yes. What's been your favorite part of this trip so far? Great question. It has to be, obviously, yeah, yeah. the red carpet, the blue carpet. The blue carpet? There's this moment where I'm sitting there, my back is turned to everyone. I'm talking to my camera, and literally Taylor's just telling me, like, turn around, there's somebody to interview. Right. And it was like a surprise right. thing. For right, right, right. It was like, I would turn around and be like, oh, hey, Taylor Napier's here. And all of a sudden, I'd start interviewing. It was like, I'd turn around and Julia Howlin, or turn around and, uh, you know, any other of the cast would show up. And it was like this weird kind of, like, mystery guest moment for me. Uh-huh. So I think that was my... Like, that was the most fun part because all of a sudden it became this thing where I'm talking to the audience and everyone sees who's coming. The viewers at home see who's coming. And Taylor's seeing it and everyone's like, there's somebody behind you. <laughs> and then I turn and get to interview him. So it was a lot of fun. So, I'm standing here next to an international celebrity. <laughs> we were just walking hold on, and... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Celebrities. Celebrities. <laughs> and they were accosted. Accosted by the locals. 
was, like, yeah. hey, Dusty hey, Wheel. He did know how, but you were the, look, I stand out, so, <laughs> but he immediately gravitated to you, so. I mean. All right. Okay, you guys have not seen the show yet. No. You're about to. What do you, uh, I have seen it, so I can't say anything. We know you've seen it. I know. However, I want to know, like, what are you, what are you excited for? What are you nervous about? Oh, my goodness. I'm just excited to see it all to life. The, you know, the cast thing looks like it's just been absolutely incredible. I can uh -huh. see them doing it so well. Just the world, seeing the world there and real and the interactions and... <laughs> Just a bit overwhelmed by it all to be fair it's kind of you know nearly 20 years of for me it kind of yeah I, I got emotional a little bit in the first episode yeah. so oh. it's it's just because of that it's yeah. like this is real yeah. now so yeah. it's like you know that moment where yeah. so, I'm so sorry no, no, please, please, please. <laughs> all right so that moment where you finish memory of light and you just cry because it's over. It's like, that's it. Nothing yeah. else is ever going to... That's mm -hmm. it. That's you awesome. know. Just and like, it's just... Yeah. And here we go again. Yeah. 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 No, I, I, think, I think you're right. I think the character's come to life. It's, it's going to be the big thing. I mean... Uh, yes. Yes. Well, Jordan made this completely fleshed out world where everything is so real. But in your head, at least in mine anyway, there's this really vivid image of how they are and what they're like and actually be able to experience that in the first person. <laughs> it's going to be my bag. It's going to be my bag. Okay, we're about to... That's actually the real White Tower. That says Wheel of Time on it. It's called the White Tower since the reign of Henry III. He used to paint it white. This guy's a warder, which is awesome. And here we go entering the wine Finally leaving London, um, <laughs> flight got delayed a second time now, but you know what all that means is, is I get to hang out in the, uh, the Delta slash Virgin Atlantic Sky Lounge, um, which is pretty awesome. So I just ordered food. Um, this will be the last, uh, last time I check in on this, but um, it's been a great trip. See you in the next one.